This picture shows us steady groundwater flow through four horizontal homogeneous layers in a confined aquifer between two fully penetrating canals with different water levels. Groundwater flow is steady or stationary and the boundary conditions are fixed. This means that the hydraulic gradient is the same for each layer. Continuity, the water balance, teaches us that the volume flux or discharge through the confined aquifer equals the sum of the volume fluxes of each layer. The volume fluxes are expressed per unit width, the direction perpendicular to this figure, thus in square meters per day. And again, we can insert Darcy's law, both for the aquifer as a whole and the separate layers, into this continuity equation. We obtain this equation. Dividing by the constant value of minus i gives the following end result. Thus, in a confined aquifer consisting of horizontal layers, the Kd value for the aquifer as a whole equals the sum of the Kd values of each layer. This Kd value, in English we call this the transmissivity, is a measure of how easily an aquifer transmits water and has the same unit as the volume flux Q with the prime, that is, square meter per day. As we know, the values of K1, 2, 3, and 4, D1, 2, 3, and 4, and their sum D, we may derive the hydraulic conductivity for the aquifer as a whole, K, from this equation. This K, without a subscript, is called the substitute hydraulic conductivity. It is the hydraulic conductivity in meter per day that we can assign to the aquifer when dealing with the aquifer as one entity instead of four separate layers. This figure shows steady upward groundwater flow or seepage through an aquitard consisting of four horizontal homogeneous semi-permeable layers, layers with a low hydraulic conductivity. To quickly distinguish from horizontal flow cases, the vertical hydraulic conductivity of the semi-permeable layers is presented in lower case, and the saturated depth or thickness of these layers in lower case D. As the water flows steadily upward in the direction of the lower hydraulic head, as can be seen by the water levels in the pizzometer tubes with their screens at different depths, the volume of water per unit of time that is transported remains the same, as it's neither created or destroyed on its way. Thus, continuity, the water balance, teaches us that the vertical volume flux, or discharge, is the same for every homogeneous semi-permeable layer, as stated here. D is the sum of D1, 2, 3, and 4, and the total difference in hydraulic head over all homogeneous semi-permeable layers, delta H, equals the sum of the differences in hydraulic head over each homogeneous semi-permeable layer. For a constant area A perpendicular to the water flow, we may divide the volume fluxes in the continuity equation by this area A. As shown here, dividing the volume flux by the area delivers the volume flux density. Thus, the volume flux densities, small q in meters per day, are equal to each other. As the total difference in hydraulic head over all homogeneous semi-permeable layers, delta H, equals the sum of the differences in hydraulic head over each homogeneous semi-permeable layer, dividing this by the constant value of q, 
which equals Q1, which is equal to Q2, etc., delivers this equation. Darcy's law for vertical groundwater flow, as stated here, etc., in combination with this, gives us this. The depth of the total equitard divided by a substitute hydraulic conductivity equals the depth of layer 1 divided by the hydraulic conductivity of layer 1 plus the depth of layer 2 divided by the hydraulic conductivity of layer 2, etc., which can be simplified to C equals C1 plus C2, etc. C defined as D divided by K is the hydraulic resistance or vertical flow resistance in days. The total hydraulic resistance C of a number of horizontal homogeneous semi-permeable layers equals the sum of the hydraulic resistances of each layer. This relation is useful when calculating the vertical volume flux density through horizontally layered semi-permeable layers. As we know the values for K1, 2, 3 and 4, D1, 2, 3 and 4 and their sum D, we may derive the hydraulic conductivity for the equitard as a whole, K, from this equation. This K without a subscript is the substitute hydraulic conductivity, as mentioned before, for vertical groundwater flow. It is the hydraulic conductivity in meter per day that we can assign to this equitard when dealing with the equitard as one entity instead of four separate layers. When calculating Q, the volume flux density through horizontally layered semi-permeable layers, good use can be made of the substitute hydraulic conductivity K, as the vertical volume flux density Q is equal to the substitute hydraulic conductivity K in meter per day times the hydraulic gradient. The above derivations provided insight in applying continuity and Darcy's law. What do we need to know? For a steady horizontal groundwater flow, the volume fluxes per unit width, Q with a prime of horizontal homogeneous layers, may be added up. As a consequent, as the hydraulic gradient is the same for all layers, the KD values or transmissivities T may be added up. For steady vertical groundwater flow through horizontal homogeneous semi-permeable layers, the volume flux densities Q of each layer are equal. As a consequence, the hydraulic resistances C of these layers may be added up. Please note that the hydraulic resistance C in days is essentially different from the travel time of water particles, also in days. For the latter, of course, we need to know the effective porosity in order to first determine the effective velocity of the groundwater. This figure nicely shows both horizontal and vertical groundwater flow. It is a vertical cross-section through an unconfined sand aquifer and a confined sand aquifer separated by a confining layer, a clay equitard. From the piezometer tubes in the confined sand aquifer, we can establish the potentiometric surface for that aquifer and Evident from that is that groundwater flow is from left to right. The water level in this pizoma to tube rises above the ground surface, so this is an artesian well. Also in the upper sand aquifer, groundwater flow is from left to right, as is evident from the water levels in these pizoma to tubes. In the 
clay aquitard we have upward seepage as can be concluded from the water levels in these piezometer tubes.